Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Proper. Sorry, I'm not wearing a shirt today because I'm working on my magnetic loop antenna. With any antenna, you can have two of three things. Small size, bandwidth, and efficiency. You can pick only two. Most antennas will sacrifice efficiency to size. The magnetic loop antenna sacrifices bandwidth, but it remains efficient. In this video, you might see some footage that uh, you might have seen in my previous videos, but I wanted to keep everything together. Now, the reason I want to build a magnetic loop antenna is because, as it turns out, I live now in a very, very small apartment and I need an antenna for HF. So the only thing I can really make uh, that's not going to be too big uh, for my terrace is a magnetic loop antenna. I did uh, build one a while ago in Florida and uh, it was a 21 foot perimeter magnetic loop and it worked extremely well. So I really want to do it again but I was hoping that, that my uh, old loop would cover 20, 30 and 40 meters. But it covered only 30 and 40 meters because it was slightly too long for 20 meters. So this time I'm going to make it a little bit shorter. You can see here uh, what it looked like uh, <laughs> compared to me. So 21, 22 feet perimeter turns out to be about, you know, a little bit more than six feet tall. Uh, the next one <laughs> is going to be a little bit different. For my first loop, I used a program, a DOS program, to calculate the size of the loop and, uh, you know, know the value of the uh, capacitor. And you'll see how that's built. But, uh, this program you can see here I have the uh, result for 20 meters you can use the pause button and uh, next one is for 30 meters and then I have the calculations for 40 meters but uh, this program as the other programs that I found they uh, they give you a length a perimeter that's slightly too long and it doesn't work well you know you can miss a band and you're slightly off frequency it seems like uh, most software that calculate the size of the loop and the web pages that do it, uh, those calculations are a little bit too long by about maybe 15 to uh, 10, 10 to 15 percent, maybe, maybe up to 20. I'd say 15 percent too long. I'll put the link down here in the description. I remove about uh, 15 percent to the perimeter length of the loop. Here's the uh, 66pacific.com uh, website that I use now for uh, calculating magnetic loop antennas. Circumference, uh, which is the uh, perimeter, I'll put 5 meters, about 17 feet, and the diameter of uh, the conductor is about 1.6 centimeters. We'll stay on 14 megahertz, 20 meters, and I'll probably use no more than 10 watts. Let's see what we get. Scroll down and uh, you can see the uh, design of the antenna here. It's an octagon, uh, which will be made, of course, with copper tubing, and it's about 1.5 meters tall. You can see here that the efficiency of the antenna is 85%, which is absolutely awesome. The bandwidth, though, is very narrow, and we'll need 35 picofarads of uh, capacitance. Voltage is uh, almost 1,000 volts, so you don't want to touch it. Now we'll go... Uh, no, not meters. We'll go to uh, 10.1 megahertz, the 30 meter band, and see what we get. And here the result. The result uh, you can see the uh, efficiency is 64%. So it dropped quite a bit, and the capacitance required has increased to 66 picofarads, a little bit more than 1,000 volts. Okay, 7 megahertz, the 40 meter band. Calculate. And you'll notice here that uh, the antenna efficiency has dropped significantly to 33%. And the capacitance increased again to 138 picofarads. Just for the sake of it, <laughs> we'll just try 80 meters, 3.5 megahertz. And you'll see here that for that frequency, the efficiency is practically nothing. It's 4%. And you need a pretty big capacitor. So it's really not worth it. The capacitor I used for my previous project was an air gap capacitor, 9 to 120 picofarads and I think 4 or 5,000 volts. 
It was very touchy, not easy to use. So this time I decided to get a vacuum capacitor from Russia. And this one here I think is about 7.5 to 350 picofarads, so a broader range. Also, it's 10,000 volts, so I could put a lot more power into the antenna. Now, as I've said, most of the commercial loops that you can find are just a tad too small. Uh, you can see here the uh, chameleon loop, and I was actually very surprised at how well that antenna worked besides its small size. And that's what they have to do to make them portable. But I don't really care about portable because it's for my apartment, so, uh, you know, I can make a bigger antenna. Oh, and by the way, I did make also one for six meters that you can see here, pretty darn small. So, um, this part here will be connected to a copper tube. Just, well, that's the problem. I don't know exactly how I'm going to connect this to that. Um, and of course, it needs to be a very good electrical contact. What I would like to have is something that's like about like this. Probably about yeah, in that shape with a hole here for the uh, vacuum capacitor. It's going to be round, exactly round, of course. And another hole here for the copper tube. And it's going to be probably more like this. And it should be about probably 10 millimeters wide. And I would say have some kind of a, it should be cut here on top. with a hole here all the way through so that I can put a screw a nut and bolt through here so uh, when you uh, tighten it it will squeeze the gap here and really secure the uh, vacuum capacitor inside the, this you know sort of clamp now I hope someone will be able to do this I'm willing to pay for it of course I don't have much money, but uh, make me a good offer, I will take you up on it. Well, the part ended up being absolutely perfect. <laughs> Excellent, it fits just right. And on top of that, there is enough clearance here that I could probably fit a uh, fiberglass rod inside the tubes to relieve a little bit of the stress on the capacitor itself. So, awesome. This is my favorite tile. 16 millimeters, that's what I need. I got eight one meter tubes, 16 millimeter diameter. And by the way, this is my radio chest <laughs> and it's metal because of course it's also a Faraday cage. This I got for $20, <laughs> pretty awesome. I have eight 45 degree angles, of course, and uh, make sure you don't get the 90 degree because uh, it's not going to work. Now you might ask, what am I going to do with the leftovers eight 40 centimeters? Uh, tubes and here's your answer Yep, I might as well make a second smaller loop Don't even think of soldering copper without a good flux, <laughs> you'll make a mess. You really want to make sure you heat up both parts, not just one. When I see that drop go inside the joint, I'll add solder.
Now the difficulty is to solder your loop so that it lays perfectly flat. And to do that, you better solder the tubes together while they're on the ground on a flat surface. And uh, let's not forget to put our toroid here at the bottom of the loop. All right, I know I said I was going to lay it on the ground, but I'm just going to eyeball it. Sometimes that's what we do in ham radio. That uh, looks about right. Seems like the toroid can actually slide over the joints and that will make things easier. Well, I think I should have soldered it on the ground because this should be straight and uh, it's not. So it's not exactly flat. Uh, you can see here it's lifting off the ground and uh, here too on the other side. So I'm gonna have to heat up those joints and correct that. This is what I should have done from the start. I don't even follow my own advice. <laughs> That's pretty bad. It's much easier to solder when the tube is at a 45 degree angle. I only have to make uh, one correction here on this side to get it right. Here. Now the tubes that receives the uh, capacitor, the capacitor will be in the middle, so I have to shorten it by the length of the capacitor and then cut it in half. Okay, say 9 centimeters. And this is how it is going to be attached at the top of the loop. Assuming, of course, that I can get someone to make two of these in brass or copper. So please, please, uh, if you know a machinist, or if you can do it yourself, please let me know. It's starting to look pretty good. All right, guys, that's it. It's done. <laughs> and this little workbench actually seems like a good way to hold uh, this loop. Maybe I'll use it like that. Now I have to put a coat of primer on it so it doesn't oxidize and that's about it. It for today that is because of course there will be a part two and we'll talk more about the magnetic loop, its characteristics and uh, actually its operation. I'm gonna make a mess, I, I just know it. And that is a Saturday afternoon well spent. Have a good one.